Alright guys, welcome to my Indie Games tier list. I just recorded this video only to find out that my uh, mic was not on, which is very unfortunate. So if I sound rushed during this video, that's why, because I recorded for like 25 minutes talking about this shit, and now I have to do it again. But um, this is going to be one of the first videos where I actually take seriously. Every video I've made up till now, I've like kind of just shat out like in like 10 minutes. This one I'm actually going to take seriously. This isn't in every indie game ever. Um, if it was every indie game ever, we'd be here for a long time. This is just some of my personal favorites and whatnot. Um, now, keep in mind, I do play a lot of games on Switch, specifically. Um, I do have some on PS4, and I do have some on PC as well. But games like Golf Story and Cadence of Hyrule are on here because I mainly play on Switch. So, Axiom Verge is beats here. It's a fun Metroidvania. Nothing really else. It, lo it looks cool. It has a cool aesthetic. And it's kind of like H.R. Geiger. If you know his artwork, which is one of my favorite. Binding of Isaac is S tier. This is a game that I have the most amount of hours into out of any indie game on Switch. This game is just so much fun. It's my favorite roguelite. Like, this game... It's it's simplistic. So I'm going to talk about this game, the other game right now, that I'm also going to put in S tier. Where is it? Enter the Gungeon. Enter the Gungeon is a lot like Binding of Isaac, except it's a lot more complex. Some people might like that more, and I do to an extent. But I like the simplistic nature of Isaac. Isaac is actually a very simple game, like, when you know what you're doing. I guess you can say that about every game, but there's really nothing too not simple about Isaac. Versus Enter the Gungeon, which is highly complicated. But these are both S-tier games. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule and Crypt of the Necrodancer. Uh, now, Crypt Cadence of Hyrule is a spinoff of Crypt of the Necrodancer, if you didn't know. They're both fun. Cadence of Hyrule is obviously, like, has Zelda and Link in it, which is cool. And Crypt of the Necrodancer is on every console and PC, whereas Cadence of Hyrule is only on Switch. This game has interesting, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It has interesting gameplay where you have to move along with the beat of the song, which is pretty fun. It can be challenging, and, uh, this game is really fun when you master it. Castle Crashers is B tier. If you would have asked me this years ago, I would have said S tier. But my thing is that, like, the humor has aged fairly well on me. Not as much as, you know, some other games. But, like, this game, when I'm playing by myself, is, like, not that fun. But with four people, it's, it's absolutely S tier. But because I don't have fun playing single player and because it's so much more four people, we'll just put it right in the middle. Celeste, S tier. What, what can I say about Celeste? Soundtrack is probably my favorite on this list. Eh, it looks probably not the best, but it looks fantastic. It has great gameplay. Like, great movement. It has a fantastic and beautiful story. Like, if you haven't played Celeste, like, you should play Celeste. Cuphead. Hmm. Yeah. Cuphead has the most interesting art style on this. Keep in mind, I said interesting and not best. But, um, it, you know, it probably is the best. It's got, like, the 1930s cartoon aesthetic, which is not something we see a lot in video games. This game's hard. Like, it's really, really hard. Like, it's so hard to defeat certain bosses. I was stuck at the final boss forever. I literally spent five hours just on that boss fighting him. <laughs> I don't even think he's the hardest boss in the game. But, like... It was, it was like, that good kind of hard, where I just wanted to keep playing. Like, I just wanted to beat it. Because at the end of the... When you beat the boss, and they say, Knockout! Like, it's just one of the best feelings in the world that you just overcame that. And it's fucking amazing. Okay, Dead Cells is a tier. Dead Cells looks good, has good combat, and nothing else. Donut County is B tier. You know, I'm gonna go back to Dead Souls. My problem with Dead Souls is that you start off with weapons that you just... A lot of times it's just best to keep with throughout the entire game, which kind of defeats the purpose of a roguelite, and I don't really like that. But yeah, it looks good, sounds good, has great combat, and nothing else. Donut County is fun, it has, an interesting it has interesting characters, an interesting story, it's kind of like Katamari Damacy, 
If you guys have ever played that, Katamari Damacy is a game where you roll a ball, and like it picks up, it like pick, I can't say this, it picks up objects, and it gets bigger. This is kind of like that, where you have to like get a hole, and it has to become a giant hole. And like, <laughs> the story and the characters that revolve in Donut County is honestly hilarious. Golf story is A tier. Look, it's got the gameplay of golf, which is done really well in this game. It has a beautiful story and beautiful art style, though. Like, this game is so good, in all honesty. Like, if you have a Switch, I highly recommend this. Gris is B tier. It's a fairly short game. Um, but it looks and it sounds good and it has good gameplay. B tier. Hollow Knight. Get on up there. Arguably the best Metroidvania of all time. There's an, you know, I'm just going to talk about both of them right now. Ori in the Blind Forest and Hollow Knight. I think Ori in the Blind Forest looks better and sounds better. Not not by, you know, too much. But Hollow Knight, I think, has way better combat. So, whichever... But, like, with that being said, Ori in the Blind Forest still has fantastic combat. But, like, the story in both, I think, is... Around the same, in all honesty. I think Ori in the Blind Forest just beats it. But, again, not by much. But, dude, these games are so good. Ori in the Blind Forest was an Xbox One exclusive for so long, and it finally came to Switch and I played it. I haven't played Ori in the Will of Wisps, just so you know. But, in Hollow Knight has such good gameplay. The combat is so good, and, like, upgrading your stuff, oh, it's so fantastic. Iconoclast, another, um, Metroidvania. B tier. If I had played this before Hollow Knight and Ori, I'd probably have a different opinion, but because I played it after, it's B tier. It's, it's fun. It's got an interesting story. It's got, you know, good gameplay. It's just B tier. Katana Zero. Uh, it's not C tier. I admit, I admittedly haven't played it too much. I've only played, like, I've only put in probably 30 minutes, sorry, 45 minutes into it. But from what I played, I did really enjoy. So, like, you know, it's B tier. It's got interesting gameplay. It's got a good story. Like, where you just go up to your therapist and tell them about the day you had after killing a bunch of people, which is cool. Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds. It's probably C tier. Like, this game's fun. It's good. You can play as Makise Karisu. Go check out my other video to find out how I feel about Makise Karisu. But, um, yeah, it's cool. It, if the game was fully 3D and not just on two planes, like, that would be so cool. But, it's it's based off of a Japanese exclusive uh, Xbox 360 game called Phantom Breaker. But, yeah, let's see. Maybe put it in B tier, but I don't know. River City Girls is A tier. The only reason I'm not putting it in S tier is because most of these games are, like, you know, 20 bucks or cheaper. This game's 30 bucks. But with that being said, it's absolutely worth it. Like, this game looks, sounds great. It has probably the best combat of any game on this list. Even better than Dead Cells, which it should because it's a beat-em-up. It has such cool characters. I really like in, like, the first mission when you're in the school, when you go down into the pool, you see these dudes who look like Josuke Gashikata from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4 Diamond is Unbreakable. And they look so funny. And, like... This game, dude, its sprite work is fantastic. How it goes from, like, uh, the sprite work in the actual game to, like, like the fully rendered, like, 2D images and, like, the cutscenes. It's so cool. The bosses in this game are hard, too. And, like, this game has so much going for it. It is, it is the best beat-em-up game ever created. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Admittedly, I haven't played too much of either, but... Dude, it is the best rhythm game that isn't Guitar Hero. Like, it looks and sounds just so good, and the gameplay is fantastic. It's one of those games where, like, you just want to, like, go to the levels and get the highest score. Like, it is, you have such a fun time doing it, too. Like, this game, dude, like, if you haven't played this, I highly recommend it. This game just, like, it blew me away. And admittedly, I've only put, like, an hour into it. But, man, I, I need to put in more. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse is also A tier. This is the only Shantae game on this list. 
because it's my favorite one. In this game, uh, you know, Shantae games beforehand, you use uh, magic, your genie powers, in order to transform into animals, and they help you, you know, maneuver obstacles and whatnot. In this one, you don't have that. Instead, you use pirate tools and stuff in order to get through those obstacles, and it just feels so much better. It feels so good, just like going around on, like, the little quote-unquote glider thing. Um, yeah, it's A tier. If you can get this game, get it. Shovel Knight, get up there. Man. This, a lot of these games wouldn't exist if Shovel Knight didn't lay the groundwork. And normally, I don't really, like, give that, like, too much, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Normally, I don't care too much about things like that, but this game, the reason I say it for this game is because even still now, it's still an S-tier game. Like, if you buy the game, it's like 25 bucks. you get the main campaign as Shovel Knight, you get the campaign as the Plague Doctor, a uh, Plague Knight, you get the one as the Spectre Knight, and you get the one as the King Knight, and you get, like, the Smash Bros-style fighting game mode. Like, this game has so much to offer. For a 25 bucks. It's hard as nails. It's got like good power ups. It's like it's got the best parts of Zelda 2, DuckTales, Castlevania, and Mega Man put together. It's got gorgeous sprite work. Like it looks like it would even work on the NES, which is so cool. Like this game, it's it's revolutionary for a reason. It was kick it was one of the most successful Kickstarter campaigns ever created. And if you haven't played this game, I can't recommend it enough. Sonic. So I'm putting it in S tier because, first of all, I do think it belongs here. But I'm mainly putting it in S tier because I think it's an S tier Sonic game. And S tier Sonic games are hard to come by nowadays because there's a lot of garbage Sonic games. Sonic 06, Sonic Boom, Sonic Freerider, Sonic and the Seeker Rings. I can go on, but I won't. This is a return to 2D. And it's honestly everything I would want a Return to 2D Sonic to be. And a lot of fans agree. And it's just... It's everything. Like, Sonic Generations was what we needed for 3D. And this game is what we need for 2D. Like, I, I personally prefer do prefer Generations, but... This game is absolutely S tier. Stardew Valley as well. This is one of the first PS4 games I ever bought. I didn't play a whole ton of it on PS4, but I played a lot of it on Switch. This is the best game where it's like an Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon style game. If I'm not going to explain what those are really right now because I really don't feel like it. But if you like that sort of game, this is the best one that there is. No cap. Like, if you like those games, you're doing a disservice by not buying this. Like, it's everything that you would want out of those. Like, it's just, it's amazing. The Messenger is ace here. It's not very often that we see games in the style of Ninja Gaiden. Obviously, we have, like, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, you know, like, Castlevania, and, like, Shovel Knight's kind of, like, a mix of everything. But Ninja, or, sorry, but the Messenger is different, because it's a lot like Ninja Gaiden, which is not, like... I don't want to. It is. It is one of the more popular NES games, but it's not like, not something like Mega Man. I don't think. But um, this game's fun. Being able to switch between eight and sixteen bit is cool. I like how the story. It doesn't take itself too seriously that much. And um, when I first played this game, I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's whatever. But the more I played, the more I wanted to play. It's one of those games where like, you know, kind of hooks you in. But as you keep going, it just gets so much better. Undertale A tier. I know a lot of you are going to say it should be an S, and I do agree. However, I have not beaten this game. But from what I have played, it's definitely A tier. It could go up to S tier. Oh, it's not B tier. It could go up to S tier, but like it's funny. It's got, it's got humor. It's got some great humor, actually. It's got great messages, it's got great characters, it's got great visuals, going back to the style of games like Earthbound from the SNES. It's so good. Like, if you if you like Earthbound, you should play this game. Wargroove, it's like B tier. This is another one that I admit I haven't played too much of, but 
it's a lot like uh, the Fire Emblem games on the GBA, or like Advance. It's more like Advance Wars, to be honest. But this game, from what I've played, I probably put two hours into it. It's fun. It's good. But at the end of the day, I would rather play Advance Wars. But this game, if you have nothing to compare it to, it's probably A or S tier. So there's that. So that's my list, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you like this first, like, serious style list. As I feel the list was not serious. Alright, thank you. Have a good one, everybody.